Stephen Mensa, the executive director of the Toronto Youth Cabinet, is joining me live now with more on what they are looking for. Stephen, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Much appreciated. Yeah, no problem. Um, and this joint statement that was released yesterday, it's an historic one. Never have the two boards come together with the cabinet. Yeah. How did you get this all arranged? Well, first, I want to start by acknowledging you know, student trustee Angelica Bell from the TDSB and student trustee Joy Gold Goodluck from the Toronto Catholic Board, uh, who also spearheaded this effort within their own boards, and obviously you know, acknowledging the chairs of both boards mm -hmm. and the entire board of trustees you know, for their unanimous support, uh, which was rooted in their unanimity of purpose, which truly really got us to this point. Uh, and I feel like that purpose speaks to the fact that we all care about our students. We want to make sure our young people in the city of Toronto are able to live and drive um, in safe communities with you know, bounties of opportunity. And, you know, historically, the Toronto Youth Cabinet would put out statements individually and have the boards endorse it. Mm -hmm. But this year, we wanted to kind of come together to send a clear and unified message uh, to the mayor. Yeah, and it's that important that you yeah. really do need this additional support. So tell me about some of the items that you're requesting from the city in this year's budget. Yeah, so we're calling for Mayor Chow and Council to allocate $3 million towards the creation of new enhanced youth spaces and youth hubs. And this is to ensure young people who live in our equity-deserving neighborhood improvement areas have access to uh, recreational program and support services. We're calling for more investments into youth employment uh, towards the creation of a summer youth employment program as well as year-round employment. We're obviously, we obviously know child food insecurity is on the rise, and so we're calling for more investments uh, into student nutrition programs and just various funding. Um, additional funding towards violence prevention programs towards uh, young people. Now we have seen an uptick in violence in Toronto schools up until you know this week we have seen things yeah. happening outside and within schools here in the city. We've seen this uptick um, taking place especially as we kind of come out of the pandemic. Why do you think it's so important then for the city to be investing in programs that don't necessarily happen within the schools but happen uh, yeah. outside as well? You know, I'm always saying that public safety is a prerequisite to prosperity, and how do we expect to have a prosperous, vibrant city if we're going to continue to neglect our young people, if our young people continue to be, you know, disenfranchised um, and just ignored? And so, you know, this statement in respect to the recommendations that were highlighted, they're really going to improve young people's social economic conditions to ensure young people have the tools and opportunities they need to succeed and drive and reach their full potential. We were just speaking about the rise in carjackings. Toronto Police had indicated that last year and the year before, the young people made made up majority of the arrests from carjackings. When you talk to a young person, I'm not going to carjack because of luxury or leisure. I'm going to do it because of a necessity. You know, I'm facing poverty and precariousness. My parents are facing poverty and precariousness. And that's what the Toronto Youth Cabinet has historically been calling for, upstream community-driven responses to, you know, improve young people's conditions. And, you know, the last thing we need is to be quick to, you know, arrest and prosecute our way out of these school violence, carjackings, so on and so forth, while neglecting to take the common sense measures to support youth. Now, have you heard back from the city at all, whether it's the budget committee or anyone when it comes to these requests that you're making, especially now that Toronto is so strapped for cash? Are, are you, have you heard back and are you uh, looking positively at potentially getting this support? You know, show me your budget and I'll show me your priorities. And that's been my message to the mayor and all members of council. So if we want to say young people are truly a priority, we're going to, you know, take the common sense measures, the evidence-based solutions that we highlighted in this statement to ensure that we have a prosperous, vibrant Toronto, to ensure that our young people who have been starved of opportunity are starved no longer. And so, you know, we've, we've met with Councillor Carroll, we've met with the mayor's staff and others. You know, they know our long-standing recommendations. These are not new. And I think the response has been positive, but we're cautiously optimistic because we know if we don't take these measures to support young people today, you know, we're really not going to have a better present or have a better tomorrow. And so uh, we're patiently waiting. But once again, the lack of, you know, tremendous funds this budget season cannot be a valid excuse to continue to neglect our youth. All right. Stephen Mensa from the Toronto Youth Cabinet, thank you so much for joining us Thanks here for this me. morning. We appreciate it. Appreciate it.